Another aspect of biomechanics that becomes really important to how we move and also how we swing a golf club are the center of pressure, the center of mass, and then those associated torques. Now let's start really basic with center of pressure. Center of pressure is literally just kind of a weighted average of those vertical forces. So if I'm standing right here and I've got equal weight on my right and left legs, my center of, of pressure would be on the ground kind of directly in between my feet. Now I could easily kind of shift some of my weight to my right side and I could watch my overall center of pressure move to that right side. I could shift all the way to my left side and watch that center of pressure start to move to my left side. I could in fact pick up my left foot and my center of pressure would go all the way to my right foot. Could do the same thing with my left foot, right? This would be an example of that center of pressure. Again, it's kind of where exactly that weighted average of that vertical force is set up relative to my ground and my base of support or my feet, right? Another aspect that we can look at is the center of mass. Now we're gonna actually shift up and say, okay, if Tyler's standing here, my center of mass would be kind of somewhere near my belly button here. And statically, that center of mass and center of pressure tend to line up pretty nicely. But in dynamic motions, again, I can start to alter the center of pressure and then also alter the center of mass. You know, a simple way for me to alter my center of mass is even just raising my hands up in the air is going to shift my center of mass up a little bit. Lifting up my right arm is going to shift my center of mass to the right side a little bit. Conversely, raising up my left arm will shift my center of mass a little bit to the left side. Now, the reason why we care about the center of pressure and the center of mass is because of the dynamics of the golf swing. These are two axes of rotations in our bodies that can help us kind of leverage this principle of torque to create some of the rotational motions that we see in the golf swing and understanding where the center of pressure is relative to the center of mass, where the force vectors are relative to the center of mass plays a critical role in torque. Torque is the rotational effect of a force. It's a combination of two things. We calculate it by multiplying the overall force by the moment arm. Now, the moment arm is kind of the thing that we maybe don't quite understand entirely. Force is related to the ground reaction force that we've talked about extensively previously. The moment arm in a really simple way is literally just the distance between an applied force and an axis of rotation. Now there some, are some other nuances in terms of what are the angles between those, but I think again, it's generally understood that it's simply a distance between the applied force and the center of mass of an individual. Now in the human body, let's think of a real basic example. So if I have my center of mass right here, okay, right my belly button, I'm standing in this position, and I'm pushing on the ground so that my vertical force comes up through that center of pressure straight up through my body, there's no moment arm between that applied force and that center of mass, and so I'm not gonna create any kind of rotation in the body. Now that would be very different than if my center of mass, again, stayed generally maybe in this belly button area, but now instead of pushing equally between both feet, maybe I'm pushing really hard off of my front foot I've shifted some of that pressure forward and all of a sudden now I have a ground reaction force vector that's coming up kind of through my lead leg or my left foot. Now I have a much larger moment arm between that ground reaction force and my center of mass. Now I can start to create those torques in my body. Now one of my favorite examples of torque is actually something that you utilize every day and that's a door. So let's actually look at that example to help you further understand the relationship of forces, axes of rotations, and moment arms. Now when we think about torque, right, there are two components to a torque, an applied force and a moment arm or a distance from an axis of rotation. And why I love a door is because it has a nice axis of rotation that would be the hinges of the door. And then I'm going to apply a force to create the rotational motion of the door. Now I can apply force in two different locations, right? What most of us do is we step up and we push very far away from the axis of rotation. And now with a pretty easy applied force, I can create a lot of torque due to a large moment arm and I can easily open the door. Now, if I didn't know anything about doors or how to open them, I might actually come up and push right here. Now I'm pushing at a distance that is much closer to the axis of rotation. 
Now my moment arm really shrinks, so my capacity to produce torque is also going to decrease. So this is me pushing here and trying to push much, much harder because now I have to create much greater force because the moment arm is much smaller. Again, a great example of this idea of moment arm or distance from an axis of rotation and how having a larger moment arm gives you the capacity to create larger and bigger torques. Or let's jump a little bit back into the body and understand the different ways that our body can generally create torque and these rotations in everyday movement. Okay? Now, uh, I think this is a great way to depict it because we can start to understand two things that are really important to torque. One is the axis that we are rotating around and two is kind of the actual rotational plane or kind of how we're actually moving and rotating. So this little wand here will help to depict that where up here we can think of that as kind of this rotational plane, right? What is the actual rotation that is occurring? And then the handle that I'm holding onto would be the axis that we're rotating around. So let's start just with a rotation in what we would call the horizontal plane, right? A plane that would cut me in top and bottom halves. And this is a rotation that would occur, you know, kind of a rotation, just kind of some subtle turns from left to right and to right to left. And you'll notice that as kind of this part of this wand rotates in the horizontal plane, it is rotating around this vertical axis. Okay, that would be a horizontal plane rotational force that is rotating around a vertical axis, okay? That's one of the ways that our body can move. The second way that we can move is we can think about it as it relates to what we would call a frontal plane rotational force. So again, this is how the top of the wand is moving in kind of these types of motions, right? And again, it's rotating around an axis that we would call an anterior posterior axis, right? A rotational plane, Okay, frontal plane rotation, okay, this type of side-to-side -side motion rotating around an anterior-posterior axis. The last way that our body can move is our body can actually create motion this way. So this would be a sagittal plane rotational motion that's occurring around this lateral axis, right? This is maybe kind of these types of motion that we could see in the body. Again, the things that we might start to think about is this horizontal plane rotation might be those 360 motions that we see in athletes, right? The frontal plane rotational motion might be things like a cartwheel that a person might do. And again, the sagittal plane rotation might be some of these front flips or back flips, okay? Those are the ways that a body can actually rotate in three different planes around three different axes. Right? Once we have that kind of set up on, of a foundation, it's really important to understand what we do with these types of torques in a golf swing with our body and how they can actually influence what a golf club does as well. Now, the first one we're going to talk about is that frontal plane rotational force. And remember, that frontal plane rotational force that would be rotating around an anterior posterior axis. Now, this can do a few things in the golf swing. Typically, what we want to see is that's a rotational force that's going to peak and get its, at its biggest as we're kind of finishing off our backswing and kind of creating that early transition. Now, this can do a few things for us in the golf swing, and a lot of that's going to depend upon the golfer, right? One of the things that it potentially could do is create a little bit of the side bend in the trunk that we sometimes see in players. But not every player will have that look in their swing with a really large frontal plane rotational force, partially because of the segmental motion of our arms, right? As I start getting my arms really far behind me in the swing, that can potentially shift my center of mass a little bit. That rotational force can have some effect upon what the arms are doing and actually also help that club kind of shallow out in the swing. So it's not just about the side bend, right? It's about looking at what those segments are doing as well and how that can influence club delivery very early on in the transition, right? Getting that rotational force to influence the segments that we want it to influence. Okay, the next one that we're gonna start to see is that horizontal plane rotational force, right? And this is again occurring around a vertical axis. In a very basic way, that's gonna help us turn our body towards the golf ball and turn us back towards the target. 
The other thing that that can have a really important influence on is how our arms and club are moving, right? That's going to actually help move those segments and then as a byproduct the club back towards the ball as well, right? It's going to move the club from back to front. And that's a really important feature of that horizontal plane rotational force. It can help us create some power and speed in the golf swing as well as we move that our arms and club from back to front. Now the last one is the sagittal plane torque. Again, remember, this is a sagittal plane torque that is occurring around this lateral axis. And what the sagittal plane torque does is it, it really helps a golfer maintain stability, right? Maintain this kind of heel to toe stability in their movements. It, it requires a lot of interaction of muscles through the core, through the trunk, and helps us kind of create those postures that we want in a swing so that we can help find those low points and not create a lot of excessive motion of either standing up or getting too low in the swing. And so that sagittal plane torque plays a really key component of the posture and stability throughout the golf swing. Now we're going to dive into a lot more detail on how these work and how we actually create them with different forces in the swing in later videos. But this is just meant to help you understand that the body definitely rotates in everyday motion. It rotates as a result of torques, which are a component of forces and moment arms or distances from those axis of rotations. And for sure, these torques and rotational forces are incredibly important to how we move our body in the swing, to how we move individual segments in the swing, and then as that final by byproduct, how we actually move the golf club in the swing.